<laughs> oh, no. I'm like, oh, not again. <laughs> you know, but the first time it happened, awful. After that, no big deal. Let's go! Newark Airport, New Jersey. I'll be flying out of here a lot because I've got so many miles on Delta. I've got to start racking them up on United. Anyway, bouncing up to Maine to visit Travis Mills, this amazing war veteran who's lost all four limbs in Afghanistan, one of only five survivors. We learned about this amazing facility he's building to help rehabilitate other war veterans who need support from someone like him who's been through it all. He demonstrated the grit that we uh, so reverence here at Love Sack and we want to support what he's doing. So bouncing up to Maine to check it out. He's landed in lovely Portland, Maine, this cute little airport. Travis just has such a cool life story. We discovered it. Love Sack and myself are huge supporters of veterans. We're patriotic. We love our country, we love those who serve, and Travis is just such a great example. Had to fly up here to meet him myself. What a huge blessing, what a cool way to spend the day. Get to see his compound where he's built out this amazing facility to host other families who face similar challenges, amputees who need to learn how to cope, maybe learn how to fish, swim, tube, you know, become active again, and Travis is just such a great example, such an inspiration. We've been privileged enough to donate some love sacks to the cause, and sectionals to his facilities to make it more comfortable for these families to come do what they do. I need to go up and see it. Can't complain. Oh my gosh, rainy days like this morning was and we've got 16 adults and I think three or four teenagers. So this was used all morning watching movies. You can see over here too. We have, we're set up to be able to stream anything. And then we've also had donated hundreds of DVDs. Oh, that's us. so awesome. This is great. I oh, love it. Awesome. All sacks and sectionals. That's great. So what gets sat in first, the sacks or the sectionals? Depends on if it's adults or teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> muscle flex, you ever had a motorcycle before? Uh, yeah. So make a fist right the engine on a motorcycle. All right. So this muscle right here flexes. Yeah. And, then I and you still have that? Yeah, yeah. So my arm goes up. You see that little hole? Oh, it goes, okay. Yeah, so I flex my arm up slow, it opens, uh -huh. up fast, rotates. So it's how fast I switch this muscle. Like my watch, like, hey Siri, text my beautiful wife. So blue lights come on. So uh -huh. then I'm one of five guys to try this out. Or no, I'm sorry, three guys to try this out at Walter Reed. And you can be like, open, close, turn, stop, stop. I hate this thing sometimes. Stop. And it sounds like a really good yeah. idea, right? Yeah. Open. I, I mean, I can, I, I can. Yeah, but I said it. So. Close. Uh, open. Close. A little bit, yeah. It, it's weird because it's baritone soprano. Open. It's baritone soprano based. Open. So like, Close. yeah, just a little more masculine. Like try, try to turn. Stop. Yeah, here, you, you jump in here. Get on film. Stop. Film. Stop. Not, you got like the most feminine voice I've ever heard. Stop. Please. So one more time. Just stop. Like, like, stop. A little bit louder. louder. Stop. Like, easier. Like stop. steeper. For the love of God, stop it! You're just messing with me. Yeah, 100%. There's no voice activated controls. <laughs> <laughs> By just knowing that you came aboard to help out with giving back to these families that have sacrificed, you know, limb loss or paralyzation or spinal cord, you know, things like that, it's just great because we are a brand new foundation. I think you know that. We have this mission and this, and this goal and to achieve it took a lot of partnerships and a lot of great work and people believing in what we do and obviously you guys did and uh, came on board. So I think it's just, it came out great and uh, yeah. people really do enjoy it down there. Oh, I mean, look, we're, we're just... Um stoked to be a part of it. So I started this company when I was like in college and just observed like people always loved the love sack. It just made people comfortable. And then we discovered children with autism are made more comfortable by the love sack, people with all kinds of spinal issues, any kinds of physical issues. And so on top of that, hugely patriotic. Yeah. 
you know. I can uh, see the watch. Eagle Scout, yeah, right? Um, hugely patriotic, Eagle Scout, three palms. I'm proud to be an American. I'm building a company in a country that has allowed me from, as a kid in college, to build something that can now provide jobs and it has the opportunity to impact the world. So to be able to collaborate with something like this that directly affects people's lives and also makes their lives more comfortable means so much to us. Well, we appreciate it. I want you to know that from the families that have been here, we've had um, two weeks, now we're on our third week of families here, so quite a few people come through. A lot of adults are going to buy the furniture <laughs> as well as I'm pretty sure I can say that my daughter put the letter together for Santa mm -hmm. and she wants the sack yes. in her room and she's five <laughs> and I think Santa's gonna come through it's when so I say I think because I don't know Santa personally but <laughs> um, Santa's gonna come through with that I've been dying to ask you this so understanding like why my vlog is called get off the couch so what was your get off the couch moment I had a guy named Todd Nicely who's a corporal in the Marines walk into my room I came out of a ketamine coma um, which Second the nation ever have a ketamine coma. They pumped me full of the um, special case, they call it or whatever, and it reset my brain to um, think my nerves ended where they actually end, so I stopped having so much bad pain. And when I woke up from that, I was hallucinating like crazy wow. um, for 10 days, really. But on like day number eight, when I was coming in and out of hallucinations from the drugs wearing off, a guy walked into my room and it was a robot, two fake legs, two fake arms. Wow. And he's like, hey, what's up? I'm Todd. I'm like, here we go again. And then I realized it was actually a real person. He's like, I'm a corporal, I'm a second ever quadruple amputee, welcome to the club, you're the fourth. And I live in Missouri, I drive, I have a boat I take out the, on the river, and you know, life goes on, you're gonna be able to make it. It's just uh, open your eyes to the possibilities. And once he did that, I was just like, all right, cool, I got my wife, I got my daughter still, I told my wife to leave me. Um, I have the ability to still live in a nation that takes care of me where I can have prosthetic legs, and I'm very competitive, so I thought, well, if Todd can do it, I can do it better. And that was kind of my moment to get off the couch and, and just start pushing forward. So then wow. I was out of the hospital for inpatient at five weeks with an arm, and I, or at four weeks, I got my arm at five weeks. And then I was, you know, back to feeding my daughter, feeding myself. Wow. And just kind of going after it from there. So you decided right out of the coma to just go for it. I much. mean, yeah, yeah. I, I literally can't change the fact that I have no arms and legs. I can't dwell in the past because nothing I do dwelling is gonna change what happened to me. So, I mean, there was days that were rough in, in my recovery or, you know, struggles I had or things like that. I mean, it took me 15 minutes, I think. I made my first bowl of like just simple ramen noodle soup, right? It took me 15 minutes to, to just get that figured out. So, I mean, there were struggles and things like that, but now, now I'm fortunate to where, you know, I drive wherever I wanna go, take yeah. my wife and daughter out. Uh, baby on the way and, and life goes on but that was probably the moment where I was like well if he can do it I can do it matter of fact the next morning I got in a fight with my doctor oh Cause, really yeah because I met with Todd in the afternoon he said hey I'll work out with you tomorrow if you want one o'clock I'll be back around and he had to run down and get some prosthetic work on so my doctors came in at six in the morning did their rounds I said I'm working out today with uh, Todd Lyson they said you know you're not I said I'm no no Todd came in I met him it's real great I'm gonna work out with him said, you're not ready to work out and at this point I had lost uh, 110 pounds and I was I, I was so weak I couldn't roll left or right or sit up by myself, um, and I just let him know. I said, "No, you're not. Obviously, you're not hearing the conversation that we're having because I'm going to go." And then he said, "Well, I'll think about it." So I called him every half hour, four hours straight. Finally, let me go. They called ahead. They told me to do anything. But it was just about that moral or that mental victory of being able to go and start my recovery and, and just never, never stopped. You know, never looked back. I love this place, like seriously, it's amazing what you've built. We're just proud to be a part of it. This Veterans Day, we've decided to donate 5% of all of our sales, up to $25,000 to the Travis Mills Foundation, so that we can just continue to support your dream and what you're doing here. Thank you so much for that. that it's great that you guys are on board. We love having you as a partner, and I can't thank you enough. Again, like I said, because it, I've seen it firsthand, um, with no hands, of course, um, change lives and, and uh, watch a guy that really you didn't think he'd ever shoot a bow and arrow because of all the surgery he had. I sit out there for four hours, you know, shooting a bow and arrow. And families down there, you know, I thought they were gonna fight over what to watch, but apparently the, the furniture. I mean, you know, the, the sectionals and the sacks are so comfortable. They all decided on cool runnings, just hung out and just like four different families from four different areas in the world enjoying, enjoying the furniture so much they didn't even fight over what movie to pick. That's awesome. But, but I really do appreciate that. And thanks for the continued support, you know. Yeah, thanks for that. Let's be a part of it. We love it. Love what you're doing here. Fist bump. Don't blow it up. I've already done that. We're just going to jellyfish it away. We're just going to jellyfish it away. Well, because the blow, you know. I got you. I got you. See who really runs the show around here. <laughs> Stop. That's it's not true. always people like Brandy. Brandy's the one. Brandy's the doer. Making it happen. Really proud of what you guys. I can't believe you guys have been operating for only three weeks. This place yeah. looks like it's just 
cruising. Oh yeah. On cruise We've been control. under construction for two years. Oh my gosh. You got and families then, inside there eating lunch. People are hanging out. I people are moving around. The first time I got kind of freaked out was when I was here and there was somebody in their pajamas walking by and I was like, <laughs> oh, we actually, we do oh, this Oh, this place now. is operating. Yeah, we do this now. It, it's hard when you build something that takes that long, yeah. right? To like. And when, now it's now into it's fruition. Happening. And we're doing it. So that's pretty awesome. So Travis uh, flies all over the country, speaking at mm -hmm. events probably every week. Yeah, right? yeah. And he's uh, a family man. He's a businessman. Brandy, man. Brandy makes it happen. I need a Brandy. Whoa. Well, don't tell Travis Whoa. that. That's right. <laughs> I won't. I'm Brandy. Don't, don't. That, that's just not fair to her. This <laughs> yeah. Yo. So I feel like uh, you, your story reminds me just a little bit of mine. I lost no limbs, but we actually someone someone almost maybe did in one of our machines. But I won't, that's a different story. In that you know you when you started the foundation, I don't think you probably could have known what it would turn into. No, nah, I mean, we were doing care packages overseas for like three to five thousand dollars a year from my wife and I just donating our own money and time. And now I mean. When we built this, it was supposed to be a $500,000 place, uh -huh. and now it's a $3 million project. Oh yeah, no, so. this is not a $500,000 place. This is like, this is world class, man. I mean, this is generational. This will be here. Oh yeah, that's the plan. This will be here long beyond you, maybe not beyond your carbon fiber limbs, you know. Those seem This to... is a newer arm. <laughs> it only lasts about three, four years. Oh, is that so, it? Yeah, I think, I don't know, I'm rough on my stuff. I break a lot I of stuff. I like that, man. Man, it's amazing what you've built. Love your attitude, love the fact that, you know, you've just grown into it, kind of like, you know, I never intended for Love Sack to become anything, and, you know, now it's become something, but this is, what you're doing, you know, well, it really changes lives. Necessity is the Greatest mother of invention. Yeah, That's necessity, right. right? Whatever makes life easier. It's like, where I'm trying to make these lives easier for families here. Um, care packages definitely do that for a soldier, but now we're doing the whole family. And your product with Love Sack obviously makes everybody's life very easy, and they enjoy the crap out of it.